Good morning. Welcome to H4 Woodworks. My name is Randy. On today's video, we're going to be making clipboards. So this is a design from David Petrillo. I'll put a link down below to his, to his idea. And I, I saw the video and I really liked it. I thought, man, that'd be a little project to make, especially I work in kind of an office environment on my normal daily, day-to-day -day job. So I struggled with the thought of making these because of the fact that I need to resaw down wood to such a thin, thin dimension. And the bandsaw that I have is not really capable of, of that type of resawing. And this weekend I was working at, I was, excuse me, I was, I was out looking around and I went to my local woodcraft store and I found these smaller sheets, pre resaw panels. And uh, they were about $2 a pound for domestic hardwoods and $4 a pound for some exotics. This case here, this is Chechen or Caribbean Rosewood. The only one I got of that was actually in the same pile. I kind of just got it. Didn't really think about it, what it was, uh, what I was getting. But anyway, so I got these pieces here, and I was like, man, that would work. I think that would work perfect. So we're going to give it a shot. Uh, like I, said, I made this one here just on a whim, just kind of a test article. It turned out really well, I think. Still got some cleanup to do on it. I have, currently I have cherry. Uh, some really nice figured walnut and also as you'll see sitting on my table saw I have some really nice quilted maple so I'm gonna think of making those up I have a piece of walnut right now that's book matched similar to this with a nice crotch figure down the middle uh, it's in glue up the rest are going to be kind of a cutting board style we have probably three to four different designs also picked up these clips off of Amazon. I'm not too sold on them at the moment. They seem to be look well. Got a little problem with trying to hold them down. So that's kind of the next part of this experiment here. And uh, as far as finish on it, obviously, because I had it taped off so that it wouldn't get the finish up underneath here if I needed to glue them down, which I did. I put some uh, epoxy under this to kind of hold it in place. Uh, this is Odie's oil on it, and then I sprayed it with a coat of uh, spray lacquer. Nice, smooth finish. But with that being said, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll set the camera up on the table saw, and we'll go ahead and start uh, getting some of this boards here. What I'm working on right now is gonna be the quilted maple with a strip of walnut down the middle. So it's gonna be a quilted maple on each side, but a strip of walnut right down the middle. So we'll get set up and get started. I've got my first set here set up. This is a really nice quilt of maple. I've got it on my jointing sled. That's essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the edge off of this to get it nice and get a nice smooth straight edge on one side. That way I can have something to run up against my fence with. It's nice and straight. So I'm gonna set this up on my Slide here a little bit. It's a little thicker, I think, than I want. Didn't realize that until I kind of moved it. Slide it back just a hair. We'll make sure I don't, I don't want to take too much off, too much waste. So we'll get this all set up here on the saw. I don't want to waste too much. set this off the side. Come on, go ahead. This is a new blade that I have. I 
I just want to check and verify before I do this. My blade angle. So I have a small Icky Master blade guard reader. Or angle finder, excuse me. For my saw, that's about as close as it's going to get. So that way, make sure that's all set up. We're going to set our blade height just slightly above cut line here. So we got we got a fence set up, but. Nine and seven eighths is the distance of this sled. And I've got this nice flat surface to run up against my fence, and also the blade will run right up against this edge. Gives me a nice flat surface. Leave my next set of cuts. flat. Now I'm going to go back. I'll reset my blade height again since uh, I took the sled off. And what we're going to do here is we're going to make three pieces. I'm going to make three separate sizes and three, three inches. Reset my blade. And uh, we'll go ahead and cut these down. Gives me a nice three inch piece and some extra left over for more, which I'm gonna cut another one down to three inches for a second one. Along with the maple, I have these two leftover strips of walnut from my other clipboard that I'm making. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna strip them down to three inches.
All right, so that gives us three inch pieces of walnut here. The way this is going to plan on looking. Basically, we're going to have something pretty similar looking as this. So that'll be the the overall similar design. That quilt and maple on each side of the walnut. So that'll be that. Should look uh, look pretty nice when it's done. All right, we're going to I'll set up here now to make the glue up. What we have here, we have a piece of cherry and just flanked by two pieces of walnut on each side. So make sure we want it like nice like that. So we're going to get it set up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Get it set up here in our clamps. Lay it out how we want it. And then we're going to take our tight bond two glue here. We'll just start adding some down the edge. Just going to add it onto the walnut pieces here. Some glue in here. Now I use these old con these are condiment bottles, you know, ketchup, mustard, little picnic bottles. And I have one bottle for just tight bond two, which I normally use, and then tight bond three that I use in, in, a, in a wet environment or, or an area where moisture is going to be introduced. I really like these bottles a lot better than some of the commercial blue bottles out on the market. They just, to me, they just seem to work better. Now that I've got to sit in the clamps here, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I have these old strips of one by wrap in wax or parchment paper. This prevents the glue from sticking. Any squeeze out sticking to the board. And what I'm gonna do is make these into calls. There's going to be a little bit of a gap between that middle here. I'm going to just try to see if I can run me another clamp right down the middle here. If I can. Sure, if you clamp them, good clamping pressure this way. I use utilizing my two parallel clamps and just clamp in the middle and then clamp the pressure down to get them nice and flat. And then any glue screws out. 
kind of wipe it down a little bit. You're not going to get it all into a lot of, we'll clean all that up with, with sanders and such. But that's it. That's, uh, blew it up and we'll let it set a couple hours and pull off the or pull off the clamps and get ready to trim it down to size. And one of the next things we're going to do is this is one that I already made up. Nice little crotch crane figured one. And now we're going to trim it down to size. We already know it's 9 inches length or width wise. We want to go 12 inches deep or 12 inches long. So what I'm going to do here is I need to find where exactly I want to make my 12 inches. So how I want to cut it. So I could just start from one end, clean one end up and go that way. Um, that may be what I end up doing. I think that's what I end up doing. For this case here, I'm going to utilize this as the top. So basically I'll clean up this edge and then come down 12 inches off the bottom. I think that's what I'm going to do. We'll find a good spot. So I want to make sure this is good and sanded and out so that it, uh, so it gets any kind of imperfections out. I think that's what I want. Let's take my, my little ruler here. I want to see my 12's at and see what I really get out of it. Yeah, I think I want to come down, give me the most bang for my buck. I'm going to take two inches off the top. I'm going to take two inches off the top here, and then I'm going to come down 12 from there. So, we'll uh, first set up here. Now one thing I need to modify on my, on my sled here is this little back blocker here that basically just prevents my hands or fingers from getting within the blade area. It sits a little high so it prevents my stop block anything. Anything shorter than about three inches prevents my shot stop block from seating all the way back. So a little bit of a little bit of an issue there I need to solve in the future. But essentially that's that's it. You got that little bit of a crotch figure here. And that's what we're gonna work with and we'll sand it down and get it nice and smooth. Alright. Today we're gonna 
do some sanding. I'm not going to bore you with all the details of meaningless hour plus of sanding. So I'm just going to go over a couple of small tips and tricks and basically what I do. So I still have a couple of different boards here and I kind of go through each one of them right now. I'm going to sand each of these down flat and smooth using a multitude of grits of sandpaper, stepping, stepping my way up in the grits. There was, or I thought would be another way of doing this, watch the end of this video for a tips and tricks of how not to make these boards nice, flat, and smooth. It's pretty informative and quite comical. Anyway, so really the whole purpose of this is we're going to be sanding this down so that we get, we get rid of this edge on each end. A couple of things we're going to be using today. First and foremost is safety. Safety glasses on top of my head. And most importantly, mask or air filtration. Sanding is a very nasty job. This is a mask, kind of a, I'd call it an RZ knockoff. It serves its purpose. I need to get replace the filters in it because it's been used quite a bit. But uh, if you get yourself an RZ mask, get yourself an RZ mask. I actually need to get one myself. So I've been finding a little hard, find, hard to find. Or even better, an M95 mask. But they seem to be a little more difficult to find in this day and age. I have two air pure air cleaners, one here, the other one is outside the camera up against the door and they will both be running at the same time along with my garage door will be open to allow airflow in and out. In the sanding process of this, I'm going to run through five different grits of sandpaper. The first grit I'm going to use is something that I don't normally use, it's a very aggressive 60 grit sandpaper. This is also a different sandpaper than I use. This sandpaper is a Norton, Norton Pro Sand. I picked up, it seems to hold up well. Uh, it's the same piece of sandpaper I've been using all the rest of my, my boards. But uh, it doesn't seem to have the removal qualities that I was hoping for. Next grit of sandpaper and is an 80 grit sandpaper. This 80 grit honestly seems to remove more material than this 60 grit. My own personal opinion, personal observations. All of my sandpaper here is the brand that I use. It's Gator brand. It's fairly cheap. Um, does it, is it probably the best sandpaper out there? No, it's not. There's a couple of videos out there on sandpaper, but it's sandpaper. It, it sands, it takes material off, it makes it a nice smooth surface, and you throw it away. So, you do you. I don't see a whole lot of need to sand, spend a whole lot of money on sandpaper that you're just going to, it's going to get inherently torn up anyway and thrown away. Anyway, enough of that rant. Uh, 80 grit sandpaper. Then I'm going to go to a 120 grit, a 180 grit, and finally a 220 grit. That will be my final smooth and finish. I'll also hit all the edges with each grit, round over these sharp corners, and that'll give it, and then I'll cut off, or not really cut off, I'll sand down uh, each of these edges, kind of give it a rounded over profile with my sander. So I won't hit it with a router or anything. Everything will be done with a sander. And that is about it. Oh, a little trick you'll see, or that I do, you probably won't see it on the video, but between every bit of sandpaper after the 80 grit, I learned this small trick. Uh, it's a little YouTube trick anyway, or at least on YouTube. So I take my pencil and I very likely scribble back and forth, make multiple lines of this board especially right along these seams to find high and low spots in the seams. And then when I come back to my next grit, I'll be able to sand that, those pencil marks off. And I know that I ate through that grit. 
and I've gotten down beyond that grit. Now, sometimes if I'm going to walk away or don't want to be a little bit, I'll very lightly write the next grit that's coming up on. So if I use uh, 120, then I'll scrubble it and then write 180 for because I know that way when I come to the back of the board, if I walked away for whatever reason, I know, oh, hey, 180 is my next grit to use. But uh, just a little trick that I use, it, it works pretty good. If you, you can find other YouTube videos for it. So. This would work much better if you have a drum sander. So if you, if you have access to a drum sander, this process will be inherently quick and you could probably batch these boards out multiples within a day. So anyway, I'll go ahead and get started and uh, we'll come back later when I'm done. Thanks. All right, now that we've got our board sanded down nice and smooth and flat, I got this one. This is the one that I started with, uh, that I was discussing in the previous, previously. And I had another one here. Also did same style, same design. Only problem with this one is it's, it's got kind of a bow to it naturally on two sides. So it doesn't really sit very flat. Uh, think I'm just going to kind of probably use it for my own personal use but anyway so we're going to get to the finishing process on these boards and the first thing I'm going to use on it is I have some odorless mineral spirits here and just uh I get these rags from Home Depot or these they're like old t-shirts or something and they're, to me, they're really great. I haven't found anything better. I've, I've used old personal t-shirts that I owned. I don't know if it's because they've been washed or what. They, they, get, they leave fuzz. And for whatever reason, these packs of, I guess, defective t-shirts um, work great. I'm not really sure how different they are than my t-shirts, but it's got to be something with a wash. But anyway, I use these for everything. It's fairly cheap. It's about $12 for a big, like, two-pound, five-pound bag. So, anyway. So, I'll just take some mineral spirits here. Get a good dousing. And I'm just going to wipe it. Give it all good wipe down. And you can really see. nice thing about this is you can start to see what that grain pattern is going to look like. Even without, you know, any oil on it. So this is basically what I'm doing here is I'm as you kind of see the sawdust and any kind of other crap that's on it left over. Kind of just cleans it up real nice, gets any kind of gunk off of it. You can kind of see, maybe hard to see on the rag, but you can kind of see just some old crap when it's more. But I add to the list today when I go to the store. I gotta pick up some more mineral spirits. And if you're using mineral spirits, uh, any kind of chemical, mineral spirits, natured alcohol, any of that for that matter, uh, use gloves. You can see I don't really have gloves on one hand, but trust me, the places my hands have been and the chemicals my hands have been in, mineral spirits is the least of my problems. But anyway, so that's, like I said, it also gives you a good idea of what it's gonna look like. So you can kind of see here what this one's gonna look like when the oil's on it. And this will dry and it'll go back to looking like it was before. Good comparison with and without uh, uh, an oil fill finish. You can do this other different ways. I like to say, uh, I use mineral spirits. I should talk a little bit about ventilation if you're using mineral spirits. Um, you should probably have a good 
good ventilation, if you're using it or inhaling a whole lot of uh, fumes and stuff. But anyway. Now that we've had time for the boards to dry from the mineral spirits, I want to take another clean rag here, just kind of give it a little wipe down, get ready for the finish, to put the finish on. Any kind of dust or anything that's picked up, the board's picked up uh, while it was dry. But before we put the finish on, I'm gonna grab, these are the clips I'm installing. And I'm just gonna kind of line it up where I want it Well, I got this set up about an uh, inch and a half or so. Try to center it best it can be here. What I want to do is take some this thinner blue painter's tape. And we'll put this over the area. where this is going to be glued down or epoxy down at later. I want uh, the oils to get there. <clears throat> I don't want the oils to get up underneath here. I want it to give a good solid natural bond to the wood surface when I epoxy these clips on. I, if you put the oil on here, you may get a, an oily surface or it may not get a good bond. Now with that being said, the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start off flipping it over. I'll do the back side first. I kind of decided on which side I want it, the front and the back. It's got some, uh, just some discrepancies here. It's not quite as even as this side. What I'm using, Odie's oil. Now, I'll forewarn you, this small container is really pricey, it's what, 40, I'm sorry, it's like a nine ounce container, not a very large, nine ounce container, not a very large container, but man, smells good, it did good. It's all natural, so you can, don't need to wear gloves, you can put it on the cutting boards. You put on anything you want to, and it really, I'm not sure if it's for some sort of formula, but it is. But expensive, don't get me wrong. Give it a good, about a good minute stirring, get it all mixed up and good. You don't need a whole lot either, so. Especially if you've got a rag, like in my case here, I've been using this rag for for a while, I don't have one that I'll use quite a bit. And it'll already be soaked in. So I'll just take a little bit of dab on there. And then just start rubbing it on. Make sure it gets in here good and good into the wood. Really makes that green pop. I'll just kind of go back and just keep rubbing it in and wiping off any excess. You'll, you'll see it soak up more in some other spots, so I'll come back to it. Once I've got one area, I'll come back and see. If I see it here, it looks like it needs a little bit more. So we put it really thick in some spots. I probably put it a lot thicker than most people uh, say to put it on, but that's just me. But it definitely. You can see that or not, but man, that's pretty. That really makes it pop, really makes it pop all around the edges.
Like I said, you can get it on your hands, doesn't matter. It's all natural. It's kind of got the citrusy smell to it. But that's really it. That's this is this is all I'll put a finish here on it. Uh, when I'm done, I'll take it over and I'll spray a couple of coats of uh, aerosol spray lacquer on it. I'll talk a little bit about that process when we get over there. But uh, that's really it. And then after that, then we'll get into installing. Well, I'll, I take it back. So once I'm done with this, then I will put the clips on, get that all done, and then go over and finish final coat of spray, do the spray lacquer. So we'll talk about that when that time comes. All right, now we're going to install the clips after we let it set and the oil dry for a while. So what I did here is I, I took my rag, just gave it, you know, wipe any excess oil off of it. And it'll stay this color now. Once your oil's in and soaked in, it'll, it'll remain this color. It won't dry out like the uh, mineral spirits that I put on earlier. So this'll, this'll stay this color for quite some time or the foreseeable future. So we'll take our clip and line it up. I think in the last, before, I think I said an inch and a half. Correction, two and a half inches. So again, I'll just kind of get it lined up here. And we'll kind of eyeball it, line it up. Turn it around this way here so that it uh, makes it a little easier. Pretty close, so I like to say close enough to go to work. And I have a small spray clamp here. I'm just going to kind of just hold it. It's just kind of holding it in place. The center punch. Just kind of make a little bit of an indention. Now here I have a 5.30 seconds drill bit. I'm just going to pump the hole right through it. Both of these spots. Now you see I have a small piece of scrap wood here. This is just for drilling holes so it doesn't drill it into my surface here. Again, clean up any excess. I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape. All right, now after we've drilled our holes and removed our tape, you can see the area where the oil is and the, versus the area that's not oiled. And this, again, was just to give me a surface to a glue onto. Once I get my clip in place and secured, then I'll go back and re-oil the area, surrounding area. What I'm going to do this clip is I'm going to put in with a two-part epoxy material. Five-minute epoxy. I really should have got some more of this earlier. But I just got a small little deal here and a stick. Just mix it up. And I'll put a little bit on the corners here and around the holes and glue it down. And then I'm going to put these small rivets that come with it. They really serve no purpose. They're, they don't work very well. But... They're more for aesthetics than purpose. The epoxy is plenty enough to hold it down and the rivets are just there kind of uh, just for show. But we'll go ahead and mix that up. Mix it up and uh, we'll glue it up and we'll be on our way.
finally finished. Well, or at least one of them anyway. So this one here is just one I'll use an example. This is the one that I had been working on for a little bit uh, in the last sections. I sprayed it down with a couple of coats of spray lacquer. And the lacquer that I use is this Def Clear Finish Semi-Gloss. Normally I use satin finish, but I haven't been able to get my hands on any satin finish at my local hardware store. So I use the semi-gloss. Not to me personally, there's not that much of a difference. I can't really tell. Anyway, so I, I sprayed it down on both sides, gave it a nice good coat. It gives a kind of a rough finish a little bit. And I learned these spray, spray lacquer tricks from Steve Ramsey. I'll post the link below. But essentially, take this packing paper material or, or plastic, or excuse me, paper bag, whichever you have available. And I've taken care of me a chunk off and kind of bundle up my hand and just buff the surface really good on it. And then it just makes it ultra smooth. I'm not sure, I guess it just, it, it breaks off that, those kind of rough edges, maybe the dust and crap that gets rains down on it while the spray lacquer's drying. But and it just makes it ultra smooth finish, makes it really nice. But uh, yeah, that's it. Really, that's makes it pretty simple. So could go over the steps we had. I had a bunch of these small thin strip pieces. I cut them down to three inches, glued it all up, real nice. Uh, added these clips, sealed in by epoxy. You can seal the fasteners are more just. Uh, a static cosmetic looking some lacquer or oil and then lacquer and final product pretty quick I've been working on multiple of these so that's the reason that kind of the video itself has it's been kind of sporadic but uh, just kind of been working on multiple at one time if you could really if you had a process good process going you could batch these out really quick but uh, that's it. Thank you for watching and please click the like below and subscribe for future videos. I'll probably be making some more. Actually, I'm going to start working on a new one here very shortly. Uh, thank you again for your time and have a great day. So I'm going to try and experiment with this one here. Instead of sanding it down, I'm going to attempt to run it through my planer. A very fine finish and uh, see what I get. Maybe this one's got a lot of, a lot of gap in it. So hopefully it won't, uh, won't destroy it too bad, but we'll see. doesn't work. So yeah, don't do that. <laughs>